It's the second week of Dead Feb, and this week you can fully customize the Clayton wallet. You can choose all the different colors for all the different panels. We have five different leather colors, three different threads to choose from, and you can just mix and match and make yourself a really wacky wallet or choose a two-tone wallet color way, whatever you want to do. And the reason we do this is to help get some more orders in because it's a really slow time of year for us after the holidays and I want to keep my guys as busy as possible and not have to restrict anyone's hours. So we thought we'd make it a little fun, give you guys a customizing option and help incentivize you guys to buy some wallets. So check them out below. We have five barefoot sneakers here. Some look like the thick cousins of their popular shoe alternative. Some have their own unique look to them, but we're going to cut them all in half and run all of our tests on them to really see which is the best built, which is the most durable, which is the most barefoot, which is the best all around. And most importantly, we got to rank it on the WPS scale from clown to cool to really see which one of these you could pull off and which one you might be a little bit embarrassed to wear. So quickly, why would somebody want a barefoot shoe? Well, the alleged benefits, emphasis on alleged, is foot health. Regular shoes constrict your toes. They don't allow your feet muscles to grow and strengthen your tendons. They also prevent you from feeling the ground on what you're walking on. It doesn't connect you to your surroundings. And allegedly, it helps with your posture by dropping your heel to its natural position, unlocking your back, knees. The same thing the high arch boot guys say but in completely different platforms. So that's why we're doing Barefoot February and Arch March. And to really understand the barefoot world, you have to understand some of the terminology. So anatomical or wide toe box basically means it has the shape of a human foot and not a pointy shoe. Zero drop means that the ball of your foot and the heel of your foot are at the same level regardless of what's underneath of your foot. Ground feels pretty self-explanatory. Can you feel the ground underneath of your foot? And barefoot means a combination of the previous three terms. It's got to have a wide toe box, got to have ground fill, and it has to have a zero drop to be considered a true barefoot shoe. So now let's go over the contenders, starting with the Zeros first. So the brand is Zero. The style is the Aptos, AKA the Wide Body Vans. They weigh 7.8 ounces. They're the cheapest at $64.99 and they're made in China. The only one in the lineup that's actually made in China. And the upper is made of a hemp canvas and we burned it and it is truly just a hemp canvas because it kind of smells different. And the claimed barefoot attributes are anatomical, yes. Zero drop, yes. Ground feel, they say it's 7.5 millimeters from the where you're foot is to the bottom of the shoe. So technically barefoot, yes. And the insole is a really, really cheap insole. It's the absolute cheapest insole out of the lineup. It's just really cheap foam topped with the same canvas from the upper. The outsole is a rubber outsole and the construction is a strobel stitch on the inside like a regular shoe, a cemented outsole. So the way the outsole is attached is through just contact cement or glue, which is never gonna be quite as strong as the sidewall stitch that we're gonna see in some of the other shoes in this lineup. And the way that the brand positions the shoe is we name the shoe after the casual, cool, California beach town. And when you slip on the Aptos, you'll feel that walking on the beach at the sunset vibe, no matter where you take it. Adorable. Eating well is super important, but it's so stinking hard to eat well on a regular basis. And that's where HelloFresh, the sponsor's video comes in because you can get high quality, fresh ingredients that seven days previously travel from the farm straight to your front door and then it's all perfectly curated, the right amounts. So instead of going to the grocery store and spending like 40 bucks on a single meal and they have all these other like ingredients and stuff that you don't use, they end up rotten in the fridge, you get exactly what you need to make the exact meal that you're gonna make and it's portioned well. And the cool thing is like, I, I love cooking, but I hate grocery shopping. I hate going and getting all the groceries and scrolling through all the ads and every single recipe you find online. And that's what's nice about HelloFresh. It removes all that pain and just gets you straight to the kitchen to start cooking your meal. And to put that in perspective, HelloFresh says it's cheaper than going to the grocery store and it's 25% cheaper than takeout. And you might think like, oh, I don't order takeout that much. Look at your apps. You probably order way more than you think because I do. I just get home and I get lazy. And I'm like, mm, I don't wanna go to the grocery store. I'll just order from one of the apps. So it's cheaper than doing that. And it's high quality and it's fresh. And with the big game right around the corner, it's a perfect opportunity to buy some HelloFresh, try it out cook with some people, prepare some food with some people, and fill them up for the big game with some barbecue baby back ribs, chocolate chip brownies, and everything in between. So check out HelloFresh and use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use the code POGROSEFEB65 for 65% off your first meal plus free shipping. And once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. And thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Next in the lineup is the Bear Barracks. The style is the Zing, AKA the Ugly Dunklings, coined by Brody. They weigh 13.6 ounces. They're the most expensive at $179 and they're made in Portugal. The upper of the shoe is a combination of mesh and vegan leather, AKA fake leather or synthetic leather. And we burned it and it just burns like fake leather. Vegan 
Viking leather is never gonna be quite as durable as real leather. It's not gonna look as good for as long as real leather. And for a sneaker, I just don't know why you wouldn't use leather. But what about the claimed barefoot attributes? Anatomical, yes. Zero drop, yes. Ground fill, they say four millimeters, but that might be just the outsole. So is it technically a barefoot shoe? As far as we can tell, yes, but we'll see if we really get it cut in half. And the insole of this shoe is a really thin, really soft foam that I don't think will actually give you a lot of comfort, topped with cork. But the problem with the cork is it's such a thin layer that you're not actually getting any benefits from it. The, the actual thickness of the cork is a fraction of a millimeter. So it's just for looks at the end of the day. The midsole seems like it's a little thin layer of foam underneath with maybe a harder material under that. And the outsole is a rubber cup sole that looks like it might be the thickest and the grippiest out of the bunch. And the way that the Bear Barracks is constructed is it has the strobel stitch on the inside. It has a cemented cup sole and the cup sole is sidewall stitched on. And this would be the most durable techniques to build a shoe in my opinion, because you have the cup sole that's cemented and sidewall stitch, giving you the trifecta of durability for sneakers. I think that because a cup sole wraps all the way around, so you're not gonna delaminate, it's glued on from the bottom and the sidewalls. And if that glue fails, you have that sidewall stitch holding the whole thing together. So you'd have to have a lot of failure in order for the shoe to actually fail. And the way that Bear Barracks positions this shoe is explore the city with the simple and smart Bear Barracks Zing barefoot shoe. I like the ugly dunklings name better than Zing personally. Next up is the Fill Grounds. The style is the original knit. They are eight ounces. They retail for $119. They're made in Vietnam. And the upper is a recycled PET material, basically recycled plastic. So no leather, unfortunately. And we burned it and it clearly burns like a plasticky upper. I love how these eco-friendly brands use like straight up plastic and try to convince people that it's better and more eco-friendly than leather. Maybe it is, but it's plastic at the end of the day. And obviously my opinion is a little bit biased being a professional leather worker. But I would rather bury a full leather shoe than a full plastic shoe. I would wager that the, the leather shoe is gonna be a little more eco-friendly. Is it anatomical? Yes. Do they claim zero drop? Yes. Ground fill, they say it's five millimeters. So is it a barefoot shoe? Yes. And what about the insole? No removable insole, no midsole. Really the only thing between you and the outsole is this really thin layer of like a jersey material, which would not be my first choice for a durable material to put right underneath your sock that's gonna have tons of wear unless basketball jerseys are just, just happen to be the most durable clothing you can own, which I highly doubt. So a very odd choice for the lasting material. And even the outsole is a recyclable, not recycled, recyclable TPE outsole. And I'll prefer the natural rubber over TPE and TPU any day. More eco-friendly in my opinion and more natural in my opinion. And the way that this shoe is constructed is a strobel stitch, cup sole, cemented, and sidewall stitch. So it's got that trifecta of durability. And the way that they position this shoe is the original knit offers the most natural walking experience while looking sleek and stylish. Next up is the Birchbury Bramfords. They retail for $120. They weigh 11.4 ounces and they're made in Vietnam. The upper is finally made of real leather. And this leather is a chrome tan leather. It's clearly heavily tumbled to give it that nice malleable feel. So you don't have to break these shoes in and you get the flexibility, all that stuff. We burned it to see if there's a plastic coating on top. No clear plastic, but there is a really heavy pigment. In order to get a white leather really white, you basically have to do a pigment. We cut a cross section to see if there's any grain. There's clear grain pattern in there. So it is a pretty decent leather. Out of all the materials in the upper, I would choose leather, obviously. I think it's the most durable and it's gonna look best for the longest. So what about the claimed barefoot attributes? Do they claim it's anatomical? Yes. Zero drop. There's no claims of zero drop. So we'll see where to get it cut in half. Ground fill. Also no information on how high off the ground you are. So is this a true barefoot shoe? Maybe. We'll see. As for the insole, this is where we start to run into some problems with the true barefootness because you'll notice that the heel is thicker than the ball of the foot. So that would make it technically not a barefoot shoe, but you can just pull this thing out and stand on whatever's underneath of there and technically be barefoot foot, or you can just throw a flat insole in there. So I'm not super stressed about that, but it is the only true insole. The rest of these are kind of garbage. This one at least is a decent insole. The midsole doesn't seem like there's anything besides the lasting material. And the outsole is a rubber cup sole, which is an upgrade from their previous version, which was vulcanized, similar to how Vans are made, where they have strips of foxing that is cured in an oven and not gluing them together, but bonding them together with heat, which is prone to delamination. Whereas with the cup sole, it's a solid rubber piece all the way around. There's no seams to come undone. And this one is cemented, cup sole, and strobel stitch, trifecta of, de of destruction, of durability. And the way that the brand positions this shoe is minimalist leather shoes that look great and don't hurt your feet. Straight to the point, I like it. Now to the final and probably the weirdest contender and the least like a normal looking shoe is the Wildling Medlar. They are the lightest at seven ounces. They retail
retail for $159 and they're made in Portugal. And the upper is actually made of some interesting materials because the upper is made of a herringbone weave wool, which I like because once again, I prefer the natural materials over the petroleum based, based materials in the previous shoes that we've seen. And I love wool. I'm just a fan of wool. It has a lot of unique properties and it's a natural fiber. And if you want more information and more wool content, check out the mugs video of the collab that we did and the Uggs video where we go through some of the cool things about wool. And we burned it just to double check that it's wool, gave it a smell test. It smelled like burning hair. So it is real wool. And then you see around the bumper and the heel looks like leather. Unfortunately, once again, it's not leather. It's a fake leather. So I'm like, if you're going to use wool, why don't you just use leather? They're both animal products. Leather comes from a dead animal. Wool can be harvested from a live animal. So I kind of see where they're coming from. But in spots where you need that wear protection at the heel, just use leather. And especially around here, this wear bumper that wraps all the way around the shoe and even underneath the shoe, just use leather. It's so much more durable. I don't want synthetic underneath of my foot when I'm walking around. That's gonna wear out so stinking fast. So I don't know why they used a wool, like used wool, but not leather. Very strange. There's no insole in this and there doesn't feel like there's a midsole because I can feel basically the outsole there. And the way that this outsole is structured, it's a rubber outsole that's just glued on, but you also have these, these interesting little cutouts to make them a little bit more flexible and anatomical, but you can kind of feel those gaps. It's not enough to really bother me, but for a barefoot shoe, I, I just assume there wouldn't be gaps where it would make your foot feel a little bit uneven and, and give you high pressure points. And like I mentioned, this shoe does not have the trifecta of durability. It's just cemented. And the way the brand positions this shoe is the Medlar made from virgin wool will keep all feet cozy warm. So now, which of these is the most anatomical? The best way to tell this is just by pulling the insole out and laying them on top of each other because the insole is the direct representation of where your foot's gonna go. So you can fortunately just line them up and see what's what. Obviously two of these don't have insoles, but we just made it work. So starting at the least anatomical and the narrowest and then working our way up to the widest. So the most narrow is the Wildlings. Next widest is the Birchbury and Field Grounds. Above that, the zeros are almost the widest, but the bare barracks just barely nudge it out as the widest out of all these shoes. So the most barefoot toe wiggle room you've got out of the whole lineup, which surprised me. They don't, maybe they do look wider, but like the paneling and stuff hides the width a lot better than I expected. But all these barefoot shoes are nice and you get the anatomical feel. But my biggest fear with these is what if I'm walking around and I step on a piece of glass or something sharp, is it just gonna go straight into my foot because there's not much between you and the ground? Well, we wanted to run the puncture test to really see how much protection you have from the real world. World. Starting at the least puncture resistant, working our way up to the most puncture resistant, the field grounds took only 46.5 pounds to puncture through. So I'd, I'd be a little bit nervous walking around in these, especially with no insole and just jersey material underneath your foot. Next up was the zeros at 56.5 pounds, then the birch buries at 67 pounds, then surprisingly the wildlings took 89 pounds to puncture through, and the winner of the most puncture resistance, the most safety underfoot, I guess, would be the bear barracks at 103.5 pounds. Pretty impressive compared to even more regular style shoes. So there might be a layer of some puncture resistant material through the midsole, which would be really a smart idea. And then to the final thing to test before we cut these in half is how flexible are these really? Because that's a big part of the argument with these shoes is strengthen your feet, strengthen your tendons and, and make your feet more how they're supposed to be by having these shoes that are super flexible. But some of these aren't that flexible. So the best way we could figure out how to do this was by doing the typical barefoot advertising you see where they roll the toe and also bending it backwards to see how flexible they really are. So starting at least flexible, working our way up to most flexible, the zeros are the least flexible. They're a little bit more more rigid than you'd expect and especially bending them backwards are pretty tough. Next the bare barracks which you could argue that those are interchangeable because they're both pretty stiff for a barefoot shoe. Next up was the field grounds which was surprising because there's not much in this shoe. Then above that the birch buries. Even though it's leather it's a tumbled leather so it allows you to be a lot more flexible than a just a regular untumbled leather shoe. And then finally the most flexible is the Wildlings. These things are barely shoes. They're honestly more like slippers than anything. They're not, they're not a whole lot of structure to these shoes. Now we've gathered as much information as we can. So let's cut these things in half and start answering which of these is the most durable, which is gonna get you closer to the ground, which is the best looking, which is the best overall, and which would I choose out of this whole lineup.
bandsaw is getting some work in this series. I've already cut 10 pairs of footwear in half. A very expensive series, by the way. So support this video if you can and the channel, subscribe, all that stuff. It helps out a lot. Let's open these up. So out of this whole lineup, which is the most barefoot feel, which gets you closest to the ground? Well, the Wildlings are 5.5 millimeters off the ground. So you're basically walking around barefoot. Then the field grounds at 7.5, the zeros at 12 millimeters, the Birchberries at 15 at the hill, 10 at the toe, including the insole, and the Bear Barracks are the least barefoot at 16 at the hill, 14 at the toe. So obviously those last two are not technically barefoot if you count the insoles and all the rest are, are real true zero drop shoes. But what about the durability? Well, if I were to rank these in most durable to least durable, I would put the Birchberries at number one because it's a five millimeter outsole, leather upper, and it has that durability trifecta. Next, I'd put the Bear Barracks because you got that five millimeter outsole, not leather, but it does have the durability trifecta and some unique materials with lots of overlays, making them slightly more durable. Next, I would choose the Field Grounds because they have a six millimeter outsole and the durability trifecta, but the upper and the insole materials are not great, dropping it down to the number three. Then I would choose the Zeros five millimeter outsole and it's just cemented and cheaper materials and the least durable out of the bunch, I would choose the Wildlings. Just the least between you and the ground, the least structurally strong materials, even though it is wool. And so they're just the least durable, but maybe the most important thing, what about the WPS scale from clown to cool? Clown meaning I feel like a clown wearing them. Duck would be, I look like a duck wearing them. Uh, double wide surprise, maybe they don't look like they're as wide as they actually are, but they're a little bit strange looking and finally cool. I would have zero reservations about wearing them. I wouldn't have that little twinge of insecurity of like, oh, do I look like a clown wearing these? Just a straight cool shoe. So how do they fare? Starting at the zeros, I would say the zeros are a double wide surprise. I, d I don't like these straps, but it does kind of look like a van. So from 50 feet away, people might think you're wearing vans. Next to the Bear Barracks, I would also put this one as a double wide surprise, a little bit higher than the zeros because they're the most normal looking and they pull off how wide they actually are while disguising it the best. And they look like Brody mentioned, like a little bit of an ugly dunkling. So as long as you're not putting them next to a real pair of dunks, they're, they're pretty decent looking, but not quite cool. Next to the field grounds, duck. Birchberries, also duck, but closer to a double wide surprise. And then finally to the wildlings. So these are interesting because I kind of like the way they look, but they don't, I wouldn't say they look cool. They look more like a tabby, like ninja shoe. And they're kind of like a half boot, half shoe. And they're like the fuzzy, like wool upper. So they're, they're not cool and they're not as wide as some of these other ones. So kind of a double wide surprise is where I would end up putting this one, maybe just a little bit above the other ones. Unless you want the sneaker look, then I'd put the Bear Barracks above the Wildlings. And now to the final question, which would I actually choose and which would I wear? Well, if I'm going just strictly off durability and quality of materials, Birchberry's easy decision. And the field grounds are a nice plastic, eco-friendly, alternative if you don't like leather for whatever reason. Some people have justified reasons, no shame there. But if I'm looking for the most sneaker looking barefoot shoe, obviously the Bear Barracks. And for the most budget that kind of looks like a Vans, and you, maybe if you want to just affordably get your way into this world, for under hundred bucks, you can get these zeros and they, they don't look bad. You know, you, from 150 feet away or so, people might think you're wearing Vans. They also might think you have a club foot, I don't know. And finally, if you don't wanna play the lookalike game and you don't wanna pretend like you're wearing something that you're not, the Wildlings have their own look and appeal. They kinda look like a half boot, half shoe. So they have their own little spot in this lineup. I don't know if I'd wear them just because of how thin they are and uh, how they don't use leather in the really high wear spots, but they are their own unique thing. So overall, which would I choose? I think I would probably choose either the Bear Barracks or the Birchberries. So let me know out of the lineup which one you would choose and support this video, because like I said, these are really expensive to do because instead of five individual videos, we cram it into one single video, so it's like five times the expense. It takes longer to edit, so subscribe would be like the number one way to help, but also comment, like, all the other stuff, because it does actually make a difference. So thank you guys. See ya.